Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a video on how to bring out your highlights in Photoshop. This is kind of how to get those highlights that are in a lot of beauty and editorial images and the ones that just t tend to sort of stand out quite a bit. This is actually something that took me a while to learn how to do and it's something that can really change the dynamics of your photo and really change the brightness and contrast and it just can really sort of lift it to that next level. So this is the tutorial I'm going to do today. Now I've already done a couple of tutorials on bringing out highlights in images. However, most of those have been based around dodging and burning. So I'm going to show you a couple of different methods uh, that I've recently started using a little bit more in a lot of my images. And I find this to be a little bit better than what I was doing before with just dodging and burning. It's really good to use a combination of things when you're doing um, skin retouching. But particularly for highlights, I found this method is quite good. So the first step that I'm going to do is work with channels today. And this isn't something that I've really done a lot with in a lot of um, my tutorials so far. So I'm really sorry if you guys um, may not know what channels are just yet or if you are not really familiar with them. But I'm just going to do a really basic tutorial on channels today. It's not going to be a really in-depth tutorial. There are a lot of other tutorials on uh, YouTube that really explain well how to use channels and that sort of thing. But I'm going to be using them purely for the basis of getting the highlights back into this image and really making them a bit stronger. So it's actually fairly simple to use. But what these channels basically represent is the amount of color in the image in these channels. So we've got a red channel, we've got a green channel, and we've got a blue channel. And then of course we have the RGB channel, which is all of the colors combined. Now in these channels, we're not really going to be working too much with these three. And it's really just a basic use of them for this, for the purpose of this tutorial. So all I'm going to do first off is we're going to create a selection in channels. And this is a really cool tip that Photoshop has inbuilt into their program. And it's really, really simple to do, but it can be used for highlights. All I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down control and then I'm going to click on RGB. And then we have made a selection. And the selection that we've made is actually selecting the brighter parts of the image. So all the lighter parts of the image have just been selected just by using that really quick tip, which is really cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go right down the bottom here and where it says save the selection as channel, we're going to click on this button. And then it's just saved our selection for us. So if I go to the alpha one channel, which has just been automatically named, you can see that the selection is there. I'm going to go back to RGB now. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down shift control and alt on the keyboard, and then I'm going to click on alpha one. And as you can see, the selection has changed and it's actually selected the slightly brighter parts of the image. So we're kind of going into a process here where we're kind of collecting all the brighter parts of the image and we're saving them as selections. So once again, I'm going to click on this little button down here and save the selection as a channel. And we've got an alpha two there now. So I'm going to do the same process again, hold down shift control and alt on the keyboard and click on alpha two this time. And there we go. We've got an even brighter part of the image. So I'm going to click on this button again, save it as a channel. We've got alpha three. And I'm going to do it one more time on alpha three now and hold down shift alt and control. And there we have the brightest parts of the image. These are the absolute highlighted parts. And I'm going to click on this button once again. So I could always rename these layers if I wanted to, or these channels, and I could rename them as bright, brighter, brightest, you know, and so on and so forth. Uh, for now, I'm just going to leave them as the brightest being at four and the less bright one at one. And the way we can use these selections is we can click, for example, back on alpha one. And to get the selection just quickly back, we can control and click on alpha one. And that's given us the brighter selection. And now we're going to go to adjustment layers and click on channel mixer. 
Now, this is just a particular adjustment layer that I like to use for this in particular because it, I find it does help get the highlights in the image uh, quite bright and it will only work to that selection that we've used. As you can see, it's created a layer mask here from that selection we made in the channels. So I usually set this to monochrome and then begin to move around some of the sliders and see where the most light is sort of coming in from. And kind of brighten it up that way. And then I set the layer blending mode to soft light. And you can change the opacity a little bit as well, depending on how you like to have the image. I think it just creates a little bit more depth in doing it via like the channel mixer option. So if we click on the eye, you can see it's kind of brightened up these areas in particular. I try not to do too much with this particular layer. I'll probably make it just a little bit softer. And then I'm going to go back into channels and hold down control and click on alpha two. And that's going to bring in the slightly less amount of space in the selection area for the brighter parts. And then we're going to, I think maybe just use a curves adjustment layer this time. It's a smaller area that we're working with. So I'm just gonna create a little bit of contrast there, not too much. Remembering that that's only working on the selection that we've used. And then I'm gonna go back to channels and hold down control again, click on alpha three. And this is where we can really start to hopefully make this a bit brighter because this is working particularly on the really highlighted areas of the image. Now I'm going to bring up levels and work with those highlights just there. Okay, and if you can see that, that's really sort of brought out the highlights in the image. I'm going to take a snapshot now because I'm not sure we'll actually need the final selection that we've made. I'm going to show you guys just how that's brought out the highlighted areas of the image, but you're doing it in a very controlled way. And obviously there's a lot of other tools we can use to kind of smooth out the highlights or make them even brighter. And this is where I like to go in and use dodging and burning. And there's different ways you can dodge and burn. The main way that I've shown you guys before is by using a curves adjustment layer and then inverting it. But this time I'm actually going to create a new layer. Go to edit, fill. And then I'm going to use 50% gray here under contents and click OK. And then I'm going to set the blending mode to overlay. And we're going to zoom in a little bit just on these highlights in particular. And we're going to grab the dodge tool. Now you can use midtones, highlights or shadows, whatever you're, you're needing for your image. But at the moment I'm going to use highlights because that's what we're working with. And I'm going to make the exposure roughly around 8% or so, 10%, something like that. And keeping with a small brush, I'm just going to begin to go over some of these areas. This is also another way to dodge and burn without doing it destructively. So I'm just going to go over some of the areas. Now you can kind of see that we've probably pushed it a little bit far in the highlights here. So I'm just going to see it's pretty much it's the beauty of photoshop and working in layers is that you can remove anything that you need to so i think i'm going to actually reduce the opacity on this particular layer with the channel mixer just a little bit just to get a bit more detail in the image and i'm going to go back to my dodging and burning layer and just begin to work on some of those highlights 
If some of them look a bit too sharp like this one, I might go around a little bit just to soften it. And I usually like to do this method before I've started actually retouching and editing the skin and dodging and burning and that sort of thing because I find it just helps set a better look for the photo of how I want it to look in the end and where I need to work on the shadows and highlights of the image as well. So I'm going to zoom out. And as you guys can see, if I take another snapshot, obviously this looks kind of silly if I haven't retouched the image yet. And we're really in the beginning stages of working on this photograph, but I am going to show you guys a before and after here and just show you how that has brightened those areas significantly and in a non-destructive manner. So just a before and an after of how we've brought up highlights. I'm actually going to do a bit of a speed retouch because I've never actually done one of those before. And in one of my following videos, you'll be able to see how I do the entire image using this process as well. And hopefully you guys have learned something from this tutorial today. It's just a quick one on, on basically how to bring your highlights out a little bit more. Obviously, if I was to continue editing this photo, I'd probably bring them out a little bit more on her chin with dodging and burning and just some other areas that probably need a little bit more light, like her eyes as well. But hopefully you'll see all of this in my next video or in my next speed retouch, which I'm hopefully wanting to do very soon. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please leave any suggestions for what you'd like to see on my channel in the comments section below. And I will see you next time. Bye.